Could you survive on welfare? It's a question that's divided the nation. The rising cost of living is leaving the unemployed in dire straits. People living on job seeker need a greater level of support. People are unable to cover basic costs of living such as housing, food, transport, healthcare and utilities. But increasing welfare would cost taxpayers billions. The best form of welfare is a job, Mr Speaker. It's easy to get by on welfare. <laughs> You're fucking joking, mate. Three prominent Australians are going on a journey into Australia's welfare system. New South Wales Greens MP Jenny Leong believes we should be doing more for the disadvantaged. We need to be demanding that this government takes firm action to ensure no one is too poor to be able to live. But does she, or her political colleagues, really understand what life is like on the breadline? As a member of parliament, you are so privileged. People that are in ministerial positions that have drivers, that have staff, and then those people, they reckon they could get by on the welfare that is basically putting people in poverty. There's no way. Caleb Bond is a Sky News commentator and News Corp journalist. What the hell is toxic masculinity? I mean, what about toxic femininity? When are we going to start talking mm. about that? He's compared welfare recipients to heroin users. The welfare system, it's not meant to be an income. It's not meant to be necessarily comfortable. Julie Goodwin is an author, TV presenter, radio host and household name. You are Australia's first master chef. The reason I'm going on this journey is I certainly know what it's like to not have money in the bank. There's always been a stigma surrounding collecting unemployment. I had to do that when I was younger and I felt the stigma of having to do that. I would hope that our views of it are changing, but I'm not so sure they are. In this episode, they'll be trying to support a family or live as a carer on welfare. I'd be lying if I said I didn't feel slightly uncomfortable. I don't feel comfortable staying tonight. I think it's criminal that the welfare that they're on is not enough for them to eat with. Sorry, Ron, I'm... Do people deserve more? A lot of people probably don't understand what it's like. Or have millions of Australians simply become reliant on the welfare system? Welcome to the, the abode. For three days, Julie, Jenny and Caleb have been experiencing what life is like on JobSeeker and the disability support pension. If I don't stick to my budget, and I get live with nothing for two weeks. If you give up what addictions you have, you can have a pretty decent life. In the next part of their journey, they'll need to support a family or live as a carer on welfare. So I've seen how inadequate, frankly, welfare payments have been for single people. I can't imagine that supporting a family on a welfare payment is going to be a whole lot easier. More than 300,000 Australian families rely on government assistance for at least half of their income. For a family of four relying solely on welfare, that's as low as $33 a day per person. That means they are living under the poverty line. In Sydney's inner west, Caleb's going to see what it's like to support a family that relies on government assistance. I think a welfare system should fundamentally make sure that everyone has the ability to live. It, it's there as a safety net, and it should be there as a safety net. There are just over one million single parent families in Australia. A third live in poverty. But I think part of the problem is that there is a welfare cycle which encourages people to stay in that system. Uh, and so the, the, the pitfalls are sort of self-perpetuating. They, they just sort of go on and on. Mary Ann is a single mother of four. Mary Ann. Hi. Caleb. Hi, nice Caleb. To nice to meet you. Come in. Thank you. How are you? All right. How are you? Welcome to my house. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, this is my youngest, Nayla. Nayla? Do you want to come say hello? 
Hi. She nice just woke up. You, um, this is Sahara. Hi, nice this to meet you. Caleb. So, to better understand Mary Ann's daily struggle, yeah. Caleb will try to support her and the family for the next three days on their yeah. budget. What I'll get you to do today was do a shop and basically house clean. Yep. All right. So you're like my money. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> How good is that? Let me do your hair. Sit on the step. Quick, quick, quick. <sighs> Mary Ann receives a single parenting payment for her youngest child. She also receives a family tax benefit for her older children. It might vary from 600 to 700 a fortnight. I don't receive any child support for the kids at all. Yeah, I haven't since pretty much they were born, and that's OK. Mary Ann's welfare payments are worth $70 a day for her and the four kids, or $14 per person. To supplement her welfare payments, Mary Ann does part-time work. Uh. The combined work and welfare payments total $25 a day per person. That's still $9 less than the poverty line. Are you able to meet all of your expenses? Uh, barely, just scraping through. I'm, I, I get scared sitting down looking at finances, I do, because I'm just like, there's a lot more going out than coming in. And I don't know, by the grace of God, I've been able to still survive with my kids and pay rent and be housed and feed the kids. It just stresses me out. My first impression, when you're living on that kind of money, you're thinking about money all the time. Like, it's, it's a constant level of, of concern or thinking about what you can do with what you have in your pocket. To support and provide for a family, you need to feed them. So Caleb's first task is food shopping. This is three meals for five people over two days. OK. That's all I have. $114. Yep. OK. At 21 years old, Shopping for a family of five is unfamiliar territory for Caleb. A bottle of Passata is $2.20 compared to, you know, $3.50 for a pasta sauce. Caleb has less than $4 per person for each meal. Three litres of milk is $3.75, a dollar twenty or thereabouts a litre. Over here, you buy two litres for $2.50. Not saving a lot of money, but you're saving some money. And, and every little bit counts. I've got a bag of carrots. Got to think about whether a four-year-old wants green beans or not. <sighs> Fuck it, let's get some green beans. I uh, am going home with $14.90 left over, which I don't think is a bad effort for essentially 10 breakfasts, 10 lunches and 10 dinners. So putting together a, a reasonably affordable and healthy diet for, for 114 bucks um, wasn't too difficult. All the stuff for bolognese, obviously. I've got two loaves of bread, so you've got sandwiches. Yep, cool. A whole lot of ham and cheese. Big thing of wheat bix. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, no, I really appreciate you doing the shop, um, but it, you know, looking at my family and <laughs> the way that they eat, it won't necessarily feed my kids or satisfy, maybe one, just one kid or two kids. Yeah. Unfortunately for Caleb, he's failed to make the money stretch far enough. When you don't have a lot of money, what, what is the pressure like to do that on a regular basis, on your own, with the money you've got? Uh, it's a massive amount of pressure. I am the sole breadwinner to bring in for my kids, to be able to provide throughout their whole life about what they need, and shopping is actually one of them big things that I get overwhelmed with sometimes. Well, it'd be hard not to be a little bit defeated about the food shop, wouldn't it? I wouldn't ordinarily shop for family of five, so um, I wasn't totally in that frame of mind, I guess. So I didn't do the best job I could have, unfortunately.
In Australia, over 2.6 million people are carers, typically looking after a family member with health issues or a disability. For the next three days, author and TV personality Julie Goodwin will be experiencing life as a carer on welfare. Being a full-time carer would mean that there's not a lot of time for yourself. I think it would be emotionally a very demanding thing to be doing as well. Julie is travelling from her emergency accommodation in Campbelltown towards Liverpool. She'll be helping DB care for her husband, Ron. Hi. Morning. Hi, Julie. Hi, DB. Hi, come on in. We're just getting um, Ron ready into the, the shower um, and I'm happy for you to help us, mm -hmm. like, whatever you feel comfortable with, yep. so you, you tell me. Yeah, no problem. OK. The couple survive on Ron's pension. Did you sleep well? And DB's carer payment of $425 a week. That's it, Ron. Good job, Ron. You helped me out. Ron needs around-the-clock care, and right. DB estimates she puts in over 120 hours a week. Go. She also pays another carer, Liz, for about 30 hours a week. Good morning. Did you have a good sleep? Which means, after paying Liz's wages, DB earns just under three dollars an hour. Stand now. The national minimum wage is just over twenty dollars an hour. Good job. Thank you. Give me five, Liz. Give me five, Ron. Ron. Okay, take the chair back for me, Julie. Sorry, Ron. I'm new at this. <laughs> I no, think I'm no, stuck on the door. All right, so I'll show you. Thank so you. It's like three-point turn. Ah, oh, okay. OK. Um, we've got to get him over the shower hob. Ron spent 30 years as a factory production manager. We're going to have a shower now. Would you like that? OK. Ready? One, two, three. Up. Ah. Chair, chair. In 2014, he was diagnosed with dementia. He came down with um, FTD dementia. It eats away at the brain or, or covers those brain things that tell the person how to speak, um, their anxiety levels. It renders him immobile, incontinent and non-verbal. So go round, another three-point turn. Hello? Hello? That's it. How much is, is Ron aware of? Not much. He's still here. Yeah. Um, and he's still in there, and that, that's the way that we look at it. Yeah. So, you ready, Liz? Yep. That's a tough gig, to be caring for someone who you've loved for decades and who you've raised children with. Before caring for Ron, DB worked as a craft teacher. A lot of carers have given up work. They've given up superannuation, they've given up career advancement, and now they're living off this small amount of money. Mm. Being Ron's full-time carer means dealing with harsh realities. I had to clear out his wardrobe clothes that he couldn't wear. He was never going to another wedding or wearing a suit um, or any of those things. Tough day. Um, I had to because this is what's going to make me a better carer for him. Pretty amazing. <laughs> Thank you. That all carers are. <sighs> She's given over her life as well to, to care for, for the man that she loves, you know. That's a massive sacrifice. In the Illawarra region south of Sydney, Jenny will be moving in with 37-year-old Simone and her three-year-old son. She wants to find out what it's like living as a small family on welfare in regional Australia. Knock, knock. Hi. Hello, how are you doing? All right, thanks. I'm Jenny. Hi. Are you Simone? Yeah, hi. Are you Simone? Hi, Jenny. How are you doing? Come yeah, in. Yeah, really good. Thank you so much. Thanks for letting me come to your place. No, you're all right. I appreciate it. Thank you. I'll we'll just introduce you to the baby. He's oh in playing at the moment. Oh. We were, he's three, we were painting, but he spilt the paint on himself, so. Okay, right, so that gave stopped up. now. Oh, hello, Bye -bye. little one. How are you? What's his yeah. name? Blade. Blade. Yeah, cool. Yeah, cool. You can come back through this way. Yeah, sure. 
Simone receives family tax benefits from the government. She's also on a disability support pension because she has a degenerative disease which prevents her from working. I have Charcot Mary Tooth. Um, it's sort of under the same umbrella as MS. Yeah. Um, so over time, my nervous system shuts down. Yeah. I struggle with jars, zips, buttons, um, brushing my hair, grooming myself. Yeah. Um, hands get cramped up, feet cramp up a lot. Um, some days I don't have use of my legs. Yeah. Um, because she can't work, Simone survives solely on welfare, which adds up to $47 a day for her and her son. All right, so this is usually like sort of my finances. Yeah. This is your budget folder? Yes. Okay. In electricity, I have been paying like 150 a fortnight. Uh, rent is 320, mm -hmm. um, but water is also added to our rent as well. So it's usually about 335, yeah. something like that. Yeah. Simone is paying more than a third of her welfare income in rent and electricity. Even on the highest rate of government support, Simone still runs out of money days before her next payment. This week I've literally got 75 cent left and $17 left in my savings. If money is that tight, like, what happens if, what happens if Blade gets sick? You know, you just work around it. Yeah. Um, you just work around it. If it comes out of the, you know, uh, Bubba's got a change tin there that we've been collecting change every time we get a little bit of change. So, you know, sometimes it comes down to pulling out that change drawer and stripping it. Um, there's been many a time where I've had to take, you know, $40 in $2 coins just to get things we need. To have to not be able to provide them with food when they're hungry, to not get them the medication they need when they're sick, that is a whole nother level. Journalist and conservative commentator Kayla Bond has expressed strong opinions on welfare in the past. There are people who I think are fundamentally lazy and for some reason, they want to bum off welfare. Good on them. The system obviously allows them to do it. I mean, people like that should be weeded out. Um, if we want to talk about people who need welfare, who need assistance, I mean, that's money that could be going to them. But seeing firsthand what single mum Mary Ann has to do daily has him thinking. You know, I, I suppose I'm, I'm interested to see how they do it. How much money do you have to get by? Uh, how much time do you have in a day to do all the stuff that needs to be done? Mary Ann's been on and off welfare for 13 years after living through traumatic events in her past. I'm actually on medication for my mental health. May I ask about your, your mental health situation? What do you deal with? Um, Post-traumatic stress, depression, anxiety. I was homeless okay. for a period of time yeah. um, due to a not very positive relationship I was in and I had Facts, removed my kids when they were two and one. Why was that? Domestic violence. Right. And I ended up having to try and fight for my kids in and out of court while I was in a single woman's refuge. I'm still having to get professional help and still try and be normal and still try and be the mum and present for my kids. And that's bloody hard. Anything I can do for you, let me know. You've got enough shit to worry about, you know? <laughs> let's be honest. Yeah. All right, say bye. Thank you so much. Bye. All right, let's go. We've got to walk. Now, Caleb faces the reality of how much housework is required for a family of five. Sort of wondering, where do I start? <laughs> There's a lot of washing. I suppose you better put a load of washing on there, or seven. Normal load, one scoop. Large load, one and a half scoop. I think we'll um, count this as a large load. Oh, 
I think money would make her life easier, but unfortunately, she's already been through a lot. You know, living in a situation of domestic violence and then losing your, your children, etc. You know, it, it would, um, money would help with living in the now. The domestic violence abuse in Marianne's past has touched a personal nerve for Caleb. Domestic violence, um, we're familiar, that doesn't make you angry, there's something wrong with you. If you loved someone, you, you wouldn't lay a hand on them. You shouldn't, you, you don't mean to. I just, I, I don't understand how one human being could mistreat someone they're supposed to love. I don't know. I, I guess this has been a little bit um, close to home. You know, I, I have a girlfriend who um, has gone through a lot herself. She had a very difficult childhood, having alcoholic, drug-using parents whose concern for her was minimal, where she ended up in the, the foster system, where she was sexually abused, and that has lifelong ramifications. Rosie deals with that stuff very well. I see that in Marianne. She's damned if she's going to let that stop her. I suppose I see a lot of parallels there. You really care about people, don't you? Of course I do. Of course I care about people. It's, it's a fallacy that, that being right-wing means you don't care about people. The, you know, the, the left like, sometimes like to think that they've got a monopoly on it, but they don't. At DB and Ron's house in Sydney's West. Morning, Ron. I've got a bit of egg for you first. Julie is experiencing firsthand life as a carer. Okay, next one. Okay, Ron. Here it comes. There you go. For DB. The role of carer has become all-consuming, even with help from support worker Liz. Just me and Liz just went out for the first time in 13 months. Oh, that's too long without a break, right? Yeah, but that's normal for most carers. Yeah. That, that's normal. I'm happy to go without. Um, I don't remember the last time I bought something. That's hard. But with dementia, you grieve why they're still here. Because I know that I'm losing my husband and the government's not doing what it can and what it ought to do. Um, DB believes home care should always be properly supported by government as an alternative to nursing homes. Not everyone can home care. Um, not everyone wants to home care, but for those that, that can, um, we try to do it for as long as because we know that they have more connection, um, more people visit. Like, we do all our entertaining here. You can't do that in a um, nursing home. You're stuck with whatever program they give, it's not that personable. Even though DB and Ron have paid off their home, with DB effectively receiving about $3 an hour from the government as a carer, money is still very tight. So she has to find other ways to make ends meet. One of the lifesavers has actually been um, food bank. Food bank? Yes, yeah, so that's um, run by our local church. Yeah. Um, so. We pay $8 a fortnight, and for that we get quite a lot of food. So we get um, loads of fruit and vegetables. Um, we get some meat in that occasionally. 
For eight dollars a fortnight. For eight dollars a fortnight. It, wow. Yeah, it's it's quite a blessing. Without charitable input into your household, the disability pension, the carers pension, the carers allowance are not enough for the two of you to live on. Never enough. It's it's not even close. I, I think it's criminal that the welfare that they're on is not enough for them to eat with. That shouldn't be a consideration of the policy makers. Well, they'll be all right as long as there's a charity that can help them. And it's not enough for her to have any kind of self-care whatsoever. What that is, is a recipe for burnout and that for Ron would be disaster. Well, what about lunch today? Do you have any plans? <laughs> Um, no plans. How about I cook your lunch today? Oh, oh my gosh, like... <laughs> <laughs> Falling in love already again. <laughs> Caleb's cleaned the house, done a food shop, and now he needs to prepare dinner for the family. Yeah, I've cleaned all day, I'm cooking now. And, um, so... It's getting a little bit harder. Do you know you cry when you cut onions? To keep the family afloat, Marianne also has a part-time job. But Caleb's realising it's not as simple as just work more and take less welfare. If I'm earning over a certain amount with uh, the single parent, then that'll mean I'll, I'll eventually have to pay full price here. Rental market. Right, okay. Whereas at the moment, I have that security of that the rental here. It's it's affordable for me and my four kids. Essentially, if, if you were working more hours, you you wouldn't necessarily be better off because you'd be paying more in rent. Yeah, if that makes sense. Do you need any help with anything? No, I reckon we're good. As a self-described conservative, Caleb is starting to recognise the welfare trap that people like Mary Ann can fall into. If she decided to work a bit more or work longer hours or earn some more money, she would be at risk of losing her benefit. The opportunity for someone to make a few extra bucks, which would then be a few extra bucks that they might not be asking for in a welfare increase. They just don't really get the, the chance to do it. The system actively encourages them not to do it. But if someone wants to go and earn an extra, you know, 200 bucks a week or 300 bucks a week, that just lets them get through a bit easier, I mean, for heaven's sake. So what? Turn that down a little bit. Just let it simmer away for a while. Dinner is ready. Marianne's whole family is back for dinner, including 17-year-old daughter Anika and 15-year-old son Cabe, who have just got home from school. Oh, Here comes a backhander. Yeah. I'm quite chuffed. That's right. Thank you, Jesus, for the food. Amen. <clears throat> oh. mm. okay. Good? Mm. Thank you. It's a pleasure to eat with you and to cook for you. <laughs> Across Australia, almost 4% of the population are receiving a disability support pension. Half have been receiving the DSP for at least 10 years. South of Sydney, Jenny is staying with single mum Simone. She relies entirely on welfare including a disability support pension. Simone's health has been deteriorating in recent years and she blames her living conditions. I shouldn't have been looking at a wheelchair for at least another 10 years. And within moving in here, it was two years before I got my first wheelchair. I can't prep food on the house anymore. What do you mean you can't prep food on the house anymore? Cockroaches, rodents. Can't even go and make a sandwich without something trying to run onto your plate. Um, so now most of the time we try and eat outside.
Simone's landlord is the Department of Housing. Yeah, and so this is where Blade sleeps? Well, most of the time now he sleeps in with me. Okay. Um, yeah. Like after the daughter came in and like he sort of said that the mould is that bad up underneath his room, he said, please just get your baby out of that room. Yeah, right. So you can see the mould yeah. growing through. Yeah. Um, and that's like, that'll come through on the whole window frame. Uh, yeah. Probably within about four days after it's been cleaned. Yeah, it's full on. Yeah. So you've cleaned the floors this morning. Someone cleaned the kitchen four days ago. Uh, this is not like, this is not because no one cleans the house, right? No. And I mean, like when we clean it, we're cleaning from top to bottom every week. A bit. Feels like the more time we spend in the house, the sicker we get. This is allegedly what government support looks like. I don't even know how you begin to accept that that is normal, that someone can say that they're living in a house like this. Why the fuck does Simone have to go through this? It's, it's, this is unacceptable. It's completely unacceptable. And what does it mean for Simone? I don't know. I don't know. Green's MP Jenny Leong is staying with single mum Simone to see what life is like on welfare for a small family in regional Australia. Jenny is shaken by the living conditions at Simone's house. It is a choice to not properly maintain public housing. It's a choice to keep people in poverty and keep them in insecure housing. That is a devastating reality. Jenny decides to take things into her own hands. So I wanted to ask you, like, I know who your local member is mm -hmm. and I've got his mobile. Mm -hmm. Are you happy if I try and give him a call? Yeah, of course. Anything that we can do to, pro like, get this process up and running as fast as we can would be amazing. Yes. Jenny's calling Labor MP Ryan Park, the member for Simone's area. I'm here with um, one of your constituents called Simone. I've got you on speakerphone. Hey, Simone. Hi, how are you going? Good, thanks. I'm just ringing you because I'm, I'm at Simone's house and I'm actually going to be staying with her tonight. There's heaps of cockroaches and there's rats and there's also an insane amount of mould, especially in her baby's room, and the smell is That's like... Terrible. I know the only way housing will do anything is if an MP actually escalates the situation. Absolutely. Absolutely. We'll try and get out there uh, tomorrow and see Simone. Yeah, happy to help, happy to help. That was Ryan. Well, we might actually get something done. Yeah. Finally. I hope so. Mm. So do I. So do I. In Western Sydney, Julie is living as a carer with DB. She cares full time for her husband, Ron, who has advanced dementia. Looking sharp, Ron. DB has to rely on food boxes supplied by the church to have enough meals in the house. They cost only $8. Well, I'm heading off down to the shops to get some ingredients to cook. Um, it'll mainly be for DB. Uh, she often doesn't eat lunch. So, yeah, I think it just might be nice to be cooked for. <laughs> she can sit down and have something to eat, so. I'll head on in and see, see what I can manage. Back at DB's house, Julie is in her element. What's your favourite thing to cook, Julie? My pork belly roast dinner. I love cooking that because I always get a lot of love for it. Yeah, <laughs> I bet you do. Normally cooking with what's supplied through charity, this lunch is an expensive luxury for DB. Can I, can I ask you a difficult question? Yeah. Um, this is consuming your life, and I know you love Ron very, very much. Yeah. You know what I'm going to ask, don't you? Yeah, go on. Will there be a sense of relief when he passes? Yes and no. I, I think because I'm a person of faith and I'm confident of where he's going, that's easy for me. Yeah. I think the hard part is 
not having them there anymore. If people got to the point where Veron's at now, it's needing so much care that a lot of people would say, well, it's time to hand him over to a medical facility where, you know, there's mm. nurses around the clock and able-bodied people there all the time. Yeah. Nursing homes can only do so much, but my husband deserves to be at home, surrounded with his pets, surrounded with um, his neighbours, his family, with the things that he knows and owns. It's family and friends that make the difference. Yeah. Um, community makes the difference. Yeah, yeah, it seems to be a recurring theme uh, that I'm hearing is that without community pitching in, life would get damn near impossible. Yeah, so, you know, having someone like yourself cooking a meal, um, you know, that will make a difference. Julie, thank you. You Cheers. too. Cheers. What I'm seeing in there is extraordinary grace <laughs> and a lot of love and a lot of commitment. Tomorrow's going to be the same as today was, the same amount of work, the same struggle, the same, you know, financial stress, the same emotional distress, just day after day. I wish I knew, you know, how to fix it. <laughs> It's day two of Caleb's stay with single mum of four, Mary Ann. This morning, he's helping out with school lunches. What do you reckon? Two or three pieces of ham? How much do they want? Yeah, two is great. Two Perfect. is good. Wunderbar. And how do they like it cut? Uh, it triangle. Triangle. OK. Thank you so much. Say goodbye, Caleb. Bye, Caleb. See ya. <laughs> see ya. I, I will see you both this evening. Yes, thank you. Mary Ann was up early for work. But 17-year-old Anika is slower to get moving. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good, thank you. What uh, would you normally have for breakfast? So I normally don't. You choose not to or you just...? Ah, uh, I just don't have time. What gets in the way? Travel time and just waking up late. 2.8 million children in Australia are being supported by at least one adult receiving welfare. Young people who grow up in a household that relies on welfare are almost twice as likely to end up on government support. So how do you see your future? What do you want to do? Um, it's a dream to be a lawyer. and I've always wanted to pursue criminal justice somehow. I really don't see myself going to uni, mainly because my mum can't afford it. Does, does that make you feel um, upset, hopeless? It feels like it's just a dream crusher. Like, I have really high standards for myself and I feel like I'm just wasting all that because I can't afford anything. If you didn't have those dreams and aspirations, how do you reckon you'd be? You'd probably fall into the same mm state that my mum's in. Just have a job, be a single parent, live in housing. It's not much to look forward to. And I guess you could say I've lowered myself a bit. So I've just put it down to find a good job or a decent job. Do you worry that you will be reliant on welfare? It's definitely a worry, but it's not what I'm aiming for. Aim high and yep. see where you get. Yeah. And what do you think that would be able to give you? Um, freedom. It'd be able to make me feel like I can make something of myself. Even if I didn't have that extra head start that normal families do, I know that I can work hard and get something if I want it. For me as a child growing up, I, I didn't necessarily suffer serious adversity. You know, I had two parents who got married, stayed together, bought a house, had me, 
had my brother, was, was just, you know, a working class child. See ya. The fact that Annika feels like being on welfare has held her back and affects her is, is unfair. Yeah, of course it is. But she still sees that glimmer of hope. And I, I just hope she never lets go of that. Like, you can't possibly prepare a meal for people with this, can you? In Wanoona, south of Sydney, Jenny and single mum Simone have decided to splash out and order in pizza. Here's your pizzas. Thank you very much, mate. No worries. Have a nice night. Yum. Oh, my gosh. Good, good. Nice. Well, bon appetit. Yeah, you too. I've got to talk to you about two things. Ryan just texted me, mm -hmm. and he'd love to meet us here at 9.30 tomorrow oh, well. morning. Beautiful. So that he can come and meet you straight away so that we can make sure that this situation is sorted. And then the other thing that I wanted to chat to you about is... I don't feel comfortable staying tonight, mm -hmm. but I also don't feel comfortable leaving you here. Mm -hmm. I have a choice to go back to the place that I've been staying at in Port Kembla. Mm -hmm. I would like it. Mm -hmm. If you want to come with me, we can bring a fucking sleeping bag and you can stay at my house. I can, I can completely understand where you're coming from and the reason why I understand is because for a while I used to spend quite a lot of time, especially over the first 12 months, out of the house because I knew it was making me crook. We need to fucking get you out of this situation yeah. and we need to make sure that Bubba is all right yeah. and we need to make sure that your animals can be with you yeah. and we need to make sure that you are not in a situation where you can't put a pizza down on the table in your own house, in your own backyard. Yeah, no, I completely understand that, you know, this is one hard place to stay. Like, I'm embarrassed to have you in my home and I'm not at all upset or thrown out at the fact that that's hard for you. I, I completely get that. I know that there's probably people that will think that it was weak of me to not stay there, that I should have toughed it out. But that to me makes it like some bizarre endurance challenge. Oh, watch the MP spend a night in the cockroach infested house. If I lose some fucking political capital, because some people say, oh, Jenny Leon couldn't tough it, she couldn't fucking stay in a cockroach infested house. Well, they're missing the fucking point because there should be no fucking cockroach infested house in the first place. I can't help but think how problematic it is that the further I go along this journey, the more traumatic and devastating things become. And today I cracked. Today I cracked and I just, I couldn't cope with it. In the Illawarra region, south of Sydney, Greens MP Jenny Leong is preparing to head back to see single mum Simone. Jenny decided not to sleep at Simone's house because of the cockroaches, rats and mould. It's not the first time I've been shocked and outraged and disgusted by the way that people are living. Jenny is seeing firsthand that welfare is more than just about money. The problems with housing are at the core of the poverty, are at the core of the disadvantage. The broken housing system is the issue. Everything else flows from that. This morning, hoping to spark some immediate action, Jenny's arranged for local Labor MP Ryan Park to see Simone's place. Hey Simone, this hey, is Simone. Ryan. Hey, 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 girl, <laughs> this is Ryan Park. This is Ryan, Simone. Ryan. I know it's Sunday morning with two politicians. <laughs> no, I'll add it to my bucket list. Yeah. That's all. As long as we get a photo, so no. I can prove that it happened. No, 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 absolutely. <laughs> I know Ryan. We we work together. He would know and trust if I called him that I wouldn't do it just for a random pothole. And so yeah, it was a risk, but uh, a risk that I think was definitely worth it. Come on up, Ryan. You right, darling? Yeah.
every week we're having to wash window frames down with bleaches and some pretty harsh chemicals just to get it off and within a couple of days it just grows back so I don't know what to say about it for many years like I was forced to believe that I was this problem and Department of Housing made me feel like that I was the cause of all of this. You're not, you're doing it's your best. You. It's you're doing your best in a very, very difficult situation. So I was here with Simone at 11 o'clock last night and this is nothing compared to what it was like at 11 o'clock last night. It takes Blind Freddy can see you've got an infestation here yeah. and you, even through your efforts, you're not going to be able to keep it at bay. You're asking for cockroaches to be eliminated from your property yeah. and for the mould to be fixed. I don't, I don't think you're asking very much at all and I don't want you to think you are asking for much because yeah. you're not. Yeah. I am under no illusions that Simone is a one-off case and when we fix that, the system will be fixed. I'm very sad that I've met you this way, but I'm also happy that um, Jenny bothered to give me a call so that I can yeah. try and get this situation fixed for you and your family and so that you feel a little bit of faith yeah. um, is still in the system. This is a huge, huge problem in this country and the only way we solve that is to stop people living in poverty, increasing the level of social support they're getting and by making sure that the housing that they're provided with is actually a safe and secure and comfortable place to call home. Yeah. Thank you so much today for the no, because no. I know how busy you must be. No, no, no. I job. really, really appreciate it. No, yeah. thank you. Thanks for having me in your place today. One must attempt to look uh, if I presentable when one goes out. In Sydney, with Anika and Cabe home to babysit, Mary Ann and Caleb are getting ready for a night out. Get to have some adult time. It's a rarity for Mary, so I look forward to it for sure. Call me if you need anything. Okay. All right. Bye. A night out, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Juggling work, a budget, and a household means Mary Ann doesn't often get time out on the town. The biggest thing that would help get her off welfare. Um, is improving her mental health. And, and she's now working hard to do that, which is admirable. And, and she seems resolute that she will be able to do that. Nice. Well, I really don't mind the rain. It's a Friday night. I've had a couple of beers. And uh, apart from the fact my voice is atrocious, I think it's good fun. Like a rhinestone cowboy. Yeehaw! Thank you very much to my expansive audience. All right. My whole reality of being sole parent, the one release that I f find is to sing. Once I start singing, it's like you just enjoy the moment. And the moment was being in that room with Caleb and just singing all the songs we wanted to sing. Mary Ann was a solid eight. She was, she was doing very well. Uh, I, I sort of let the team down a bit. <laughs> well, you're, you're a shitload better at this than I am. <laughs> that was now. just my warm up. Well, there you go, it was good fun. <laughs> on his last morning with Mary Ann, the reality of her future is playing on Caleb's mind. She's proven that it is possible to raise a family on welfare. She does it. But how sustainable is that? And she's got older kids, but she's got a four-year-old as well, which, you know, feasibly means she's got another 15 years at least of a dependent at home. And if she doesn't have the opportunity to get out of where she is now, well, you know, it's essentially more of the same. Would you be disappointed if the cycle of welfare didn't end with you, that your kids ended up on welfare. Yeah, I would be disappointed. And my goal is, as their mother is, I want it to stop with me. Caleb is starting to wonder if living on welfare is more than just food on the table and a roof over your head. I'd like to think that Marianne and her family could get more support, because who wants to see kids struggle? 
And for someone like Mary Ann, it, it may not necessarily be cash in hand. It, it might be someone who can come in and assist in the house a few days a week. Sometimes I think it's more than money. And I think one of those things is just knowing that someone else cares or helps, I guess, which Mary Ann doesn't get. In Western Sydney, it's time for Julie to say goodbye to DB and Ron. Thank you for having me in your home, Ron. I really appreciate it. Really honoured to hear your story. I take my hat off to her for her resilience and her, her mental strength. See you later. There are decisions being made by people far away about what's an appropriate amount of welfare for DB to receive, and it's not enough. Even though they've got a house that's been paid off, they're barely making ends meet. So is this, is this all they have to look forward to? These people who worked hard, you know, beautiful members of the community, pay your taxes, be good citizens, raise your children to be good citizens. And it seems to me that all they've got to look forward to is just this spiral of, of living on welfare and debt and stress. I'll see you Thank later. you so much. After their time with families and carers on welfare, Jenny, Caleb and Julie are dismayed by what they've seen. It's not enough to live on. It's not enough to live on and it's not enough to be able to make sure that you're living in a way that means that you are not just constantly stressing about money. If I could change anything, the most fundamental thing I would do is make it a more human system. Come on. No, no, no. <laughs> it's lovely to meet you, Mary. You too, Caleb. And I suppose a one-size-fits-all system doesn't necessarily meet everyone's needs. Thank you, mary -Ann. See ya. See ya. Bye. I hadn't thought about that grief of watching the person that you've loved and you've been married to for 37 years suffering like that, and he is suffering. If the people could cast their focus broader because they didn't have financial stress at home or because they weren't worried every day about what's around the corner for them, what they could achieve. I can't even imagine. It's a great waste. It's a terrible waste. Next time on Could You Survive on the Breadline? I go hungry if I don't get money. Suck it up, princess. Jenny, Julie and Caleb are going to try and get off welfare and into the workforce. Certainly stress is about having to serve customers. The, the effort is not commensurate with the money and I don't think I could sustainably do it. Does the system mean some are better off not working? Fuck, what, what are you achieving by sitting around on welfare? If I couldn't have drawn some money off my mortgage, this would be my story. Or is it as simple as just finding a job? If I was in this situation and I had no prospect of getting out of it, I'd be, I'd be really stressing at this point. Mm -hmm.